Hello, good evening. Now, in this <laughs> in this video, uh, I'm gonna gonna start to talk about gene regulation. Um, now, basically, it means um, switching on and switching off genes. So, why why do you do they need to switch on and off? You see, is for the bacteria and for any organism for that matter. But if, because we are talking at the prokaryotic system. Uh, bacteria needs to switch on and off so that they can save energy. For example, a, a bacteria have different genes to metabolize different forms of sugar. For example, they have genes that can metabolize glucose, lactose, um, arabinose, and so on. But if glucose is present, that becomes the sugar of choice for a source of carbon. Why? Because it's the most simple. So in the presence of glucose, it will just switch on the, the glucose operon. And uh, because they're using just to metabolize glucose, so they don't need to, the genes to metabolize other sugars. So in that case, they just switch off the other, uh, other genes that it is involved in the metabolism of other sugars. So that way, they don't waste uh, energy on producing genes that they're not going to use. All right? Now, uh, this slide shows that... Um, uh, gene expression can be controlled at various levels. It can be controlled uh, at the transcription level. That means it controls whether the genes are transcribed or not. Not only that, it can control whether there is just minimal transcription or there can be activated transcription. That means you transcribe in um, a lot of copies. You can control by RNA processing. That means you determine uh, how the RNA is being processed. This is especially true for eukaryotes where you have splicing and, um, and gene editing and so on. Uh, you can control RNA stability. Why? That mean, RNA is normally degraded quite quickly, but there are means and ways that you can retain the RNA so that if you have the RNA, that means you have the gene. right? So you can control the amount of uh, gene products by controlling the stability of the mRNA. You can do that. You can control at the translation uh, level at stage. You can control after transition, that's, that's the post transition. So there are various, various uh, points um, that you can use for control. But in this particular course, um, we are going to specifically look at just controls at the transcription level. Okay. Um, the, now, the beginning part of this topic really focuses on some general concepts and general terms. Uh, that you should know regarding gene regulation um, and only later on we are going to look at some specific examples. Now in, when we talk about uh, gene regulation, some genes are regulated, not, not all genes are regulated, so some are regulated but some are what they call as constitutively expressed. Constitutively expressed means it's always on and these are genes that are involved in the day-to-day -day function of the cell. I mean like, you know, um, met whatever material for it to live um, in, in, in normal day-to-day -day conditions. So these are what we call, sometimes we also call them housekeeping genes. And they are constitutively expressed. That means they're always on. They don't need to be regulated. In the class of regulated genes, there, as I said, they need to be switched on and switched off. So there are two main categories. One is called inducible. That means, inducible means it can be switched on, which means to say that the, the, um, the usual condition for the gene is that it is always off. Only when you need it, you induce it, you switch it on. So this is inducible. But there are also another group of genes, which is called the repressible. Repressible means in the usual case, the genes are always on. When you don't need it, you switch it off. Okay, can you see the difference between the two? Uh, one is that you don't have it, you only switch it on when you want it. Or the other one, that, that's inducible. Or the other one, um, you have it, but if you have too much of it, then you need to switch it off. All right. So that's repressible. So these are the two main terms. 
Other uh, terms that you can see when you talk about gene regulation are effective molecules, molecules that gives effects, and they can be either inducers, they can be repressors, they can be activators. Now you'll you'll, you'll hear some of the various terms that refers to molecules or proteins that exert effect in terms of gene function. You can see my the tail of my cat. Um, all right, uh, and then. Allosteric transitions. What does it mean? It means that you know you know how proteins, right? Proteins uh, they are folded um, at different conditions. Sometimes they are folded different way, and they have different uh, abilities. For example, um, a protein may be inactive. That means it does not have any effect. But after it is activated by another protein, that it changes shape, then it becomes active. So this change are called uh, allosteric transitions. Operons, uh, we are going to look at it. Uh, it is basically referring to the structure of how genes are being organized. Uh, we are going to look at um, uh, operons later. Factors and elements are referring to um, elements within the genes. Um, we ha you you should have seen, you should have come across the the terms promoters, where polymerase binds to start off transcription. So those are uh, an example of an element. Cis or trans, uh, basically it means if it's cis, that means if this is the gene, cis means very close to the gene on its side. But if it's trans. Maybe if you maybe you know the gene is here, but the regulation sequence is somewhere very far, or even at a different molecule, you know. So so, so that that is what that is what you call refer to as trans. Okay. Um, now, these two slides uh, g will give you uh, an example of inducible and repressible. Remember, here you have inducible genes and then repressible genes. But here you also have positive and negative, here positive and negative. Let's look at an inducible gene. So inducible, what does it mean again? It means that it can switch, it can be switched on. Normally it's off, but you want to switch it on. To switch on, you have two ways that you can do it. One is either uh, you add something to switch it on. Two or you can remove something to switch it on. Both effects, uh, the, the, the end result is switching on. But one is either you give something, the other one is remove something. Let's look, let's look, let's look at this example. Negative control. Yeah, we, we are looking at these two panel of pictures. In negative control, normally you have a repressor molecule. This repressor is blocking the gene from, is, is blocking the polymerase from binding. When polymerase cannot bind, that means, that means well, it cannot transcribe. But if you want to switch it on, you have to remove this uh, block. You move the, remove this repressor. Here, for example, you have this molecule called an inducer. Inducer binds to the repressor, changes the shape of the repressor. Here is it has more of a box type, but here is more of a bend, bended, bent shape. You know? So, and then because it is bent, it can no longer bind. Because it cannot bind now, it allows polymerase to, to bind to that region. And because polymerase now can bind, they can uh, undergo transcription. So this is switching on by a removal of a repressor. And this is called negative control. On the right side, this is called positive control. Now, in this uh, situation, you can see that the RNA is not binding. But however, there's nothing there that's blocking the RNA from binding. It's just that um, the situation is that uh, RNA does not recognize that site uh, as a start for transcription. But now here as is an inducer. Inducer then binds. Here you see on the left side you have a repressor. This one you have an activator. But this activator is inactive. But upon uh, binding with an inducer, the activator now becomes active, 
This now binds to the uh, regulatory region and because this binds, it sort of calls the polymerase to bind that and start transcription. See, so for this, this is positive control. So for, for this slide, negative control and positive control, one is removal of repressor, the other one is addition of activator, both results in transcription, both results in switching on of the gene by uh, transcription. All right, so remember, inducible. Initially, they're off. You either remove the repressor or add the activator, then it becomes on. On the contrary, when you look at the repressible system, remember, repressible system, that means always on. If you have too much of it, then you need to switch off. So again, you also have negative control and you have positive control. In negative control, normally you have polymerase um, doing the expression. It's always on. But at the presence of a co-repressor, now this co-repressor binds to a repressor, repressor then fights, you know, uh, uh, competes with polymerase to bind to that region. It sort of removes because it binds quicker than the polymerase, so it removes polymerase. All right, so that's negative control. So the result here is stoppage, um, blocking of transcription. In positive control, similarly, now you have this activator. Activator calls or, or recruits polymerase to, to do transcription, but with the co-repressor, co-repressor binds to the activator. Now, activator can no longer call polymerase, so then polymerase cannot transcribe. So, remember, repressible means the outcome of repressible system is switching off. You switch off by either you add something or you remove something. Okay, so I hope that that's clear. Have a look at the figure again and then try to see the difference. And I'll see you in the next video.